just a minute. I think uh, now it's right, the right time to say thank you for the sponsor of this uh, event, Omodent, because we just saw their special breakfast. So thank you very much for sponsoring this event. You saw Professor Zacherson's uh, approach this morning, uh, also showing how, how important it is that we uh, understand that we don't work somewhere in a vacuum as orthodontists. You know, we we treat patients. Number one, and number two, many many times our patients require not only our assistance but the assistance of other professionals in the medical field and the dental field in order to solve their problems. And uh, I believe he said yesterday something that I, I thought was an interesting pearl that. Together we can achieve more than we could each achieve alone. So now we're going to hear a case that uh, embodies that kind of approach. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Elena Ivanu, and I'm the last for the day, finally. I will uh, present a case of combined orthodontic treatment and orthognathic surgery that was treated in the university's clinic under the supervision of Dr. Moshe Davidovich. Moshe Davidovich, sorry. <laughs> this is the island I come from. You know Cyprus already. A 40 minutes flight from Tel Aviv. You heard all about Cyprus, but they say third time's a charm. So. I live in Paphos, in the western part of the island, with a population of 90,000 people. Paphos is a candidate city for European Capital of Culture for 2017. In this photo, you can take a closer look into the city and see all the different layers of its history. Now you will also enjoy a small video of Cyprus. You are all very welcome to visit us anytime. And I there was sound. Okay, since you already saw a bit of Cyprus, I will skip. Sorry. This is my patient, 16 year old male who came to the university's cleaning, complaining that his upper teeth are behind his lower when he closes his mouth. His clinical examination revealed a positive medical history. A few years before, he underwent the surgery to improve his nasal breathing, which included resection of his nasal septum, turbinectomy, and adenoidectomy. He suffers from extrasystole, which is a condition that causes irregular heartbeat. He has asthma, which is being regulated, and he has a blood disorder, a deficiency of a clotting factor 5 an inherited condition that affects the ability of the blood to clot. After consulting with his cardiologist, he gave us a permission to commence orthodontic treatment. As you can see from these photos, the patient has a symmetric face, his tongue has an anterior position, and he has a difficulty in closing his lips. In the profile view, the difficulty that the patient has to close is even more obvious and both of his lips are protruding. This is a close-up photo of the patient's mouth. He has a good oral hygiene. The tongue is forward positioned, and he has an anterior open bite of two millimeters. A space of two millimeters is present between the upper and central incisors. A fracture of the incisal edge of tooth number 21 and a discrepancy of the upper and lower arch in the posterior area causing a crossbite. His facial midline does not coincide with the middle of the upper teeth, the upper midline, and the lower midline does not match the upper. There's, there is a discrepancy of three millimeters. This is a patient's occlusion from a side view, the right side, a class three molar relationship compared to a class one relationship that is considered to be ideal. This is a patient's left side, again a class three molar relationship. If we observe the arches from a different view, 
we can see the upper lateral incisor that is displaced in the palate and there is no space for it in the arch. Arch forms do not match in, sh in shape or size. From his x-ray evaluation, there is no visible pathology and you can see that all teeth are present in the mouth except from the third molars which have not erupted yet. This is his side view, x-ray, cephalometric x-ray, which is used to measure the skeletal and dental discrepancies of the patient compared to mean values of the population. The clinical findings match the cephalometric findings, mainly a protruding mandible and an increased lower anterior facial height, protruding incisor and lips. To sum up, the patient has a list of problems skeletal, dental, and soft tissue related, a severely protruded lower jaw, an anterior open bite, negative overjet, which is a reverse relation of upper to lower dental arches, severe lack of space in the upper arch, deviation of the midlines, protruding lips, and forward tongue position. The treatment plan for this patient comprised of a combination of orthodontic treatment and orthognathic surgery. The orthodontic treatment has an objective to prepare the arches for orthognathic surgery. Teeth should be in the correct place in their apical basis. After extracting first plimoras in the upper arch, we corrected the midline deviation and made space for palatally displaced lateral and started pulling it to the arch, as you can see here. Using two kinds of wires simultaneously, we move the lateral incisor to its place. After six months, you can see it's in the correct position. All teeth are also in the correct position on their apical basis in their jaws by using rectangular stainless steel wires. We also corrected the root position, which is a time-consuming procedure, and the patient's occlusion looks even more severe than his original, which is a, a the preparation actually that we make for the surgical procedure. Now he's ready for his surgery. You can see from the profile view that he looks even worse, but that's expected. You can see the surgical hooks placed on the arch wire for the intermaxillary fixation during surgery. And these are the three procedures that the surgical procedure comprised of. A differential mandibular setback of 13 millimeters in the left side and 10 millimeters in the right side, correcting the lower midline deviation by two millimeters. A maxillary advancement of four millimeters, correcting the midline deviation by rotating the maxilla one millimeter to the left, and an advancement genioplasty. And here, the technique used for the mandibular setback was intraoral vertical oblique ramus osteotomy. For the maxillary advancement, a Lefort one osteotomy was performed. This is for Dini and me in the surgical room. This is a short video to explain the, mo the movement of jaws during surgery. No sound, you can see here the mandibular surgery and the maxillary simultaneously. And you will see also the fixation of the two jaws in their final position. And this is the patient two months after surgery. The intermaxillary fixation has been removed and we are ready to begin with the short post-surgery orthodontic treatment. This is his intraoral views. Some detailing, some bends in the wire and some finishing elastics for settling of the occlusion. And this is a patient on the day of the, his debonding when we removed all orthodontic appliances. His profile view, his intraoral view, his x-ray, panoramic 
encephalometric view where you can see again the stabilizing mini plates that were used to keep the new position of the jaws and the patient before and after. And his profile view, his intraoral view. Okay, I hope that was short enough. So I will also take this opportunity to thank all of my instructors, my senior, hi, <laughs> my junior, and all the people in the university that make these three and a half years a beautiful stay, my friends here in Tel Aviv, and not only, but most of all, I would like to thank my family for standing by me in this journey. Without them, I would not be here enjoying my graduation day. I would like to thank all of my friends and to all of my friends I hope that's correct. Good. I wish you good luck and all the best. Thank you. Okay, uh, now I can uh, put on my regular jacket. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, joining us this morning for uh, this uh, very happy occasion. We're very proud of uh, our graduating class. We're always happy to see all of our alumni, which you are now joining. Okay, you wear these gowns only today. This is it. And uh, we will celebrate together on uh, Saturday night at the faculty club. Uh, we hope to see you all there. Have a Shabbat Shalom. Everyone who's uh, visiting around the country, I hope they have a good uh, trip wherever they're going around. And uh, we'll see everybody next time.